what would you say is abundance for you? Well, most people think that abundance is an extremely plentiful or oversufficient quantity or supply of something. And some people think it's power, some people think it's riches, basically plenty. But basically, what abundance really means, and that's what it really feels like, is freedom. It's the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do want to do it because you have more than enough of everything you believe you need, want, and desire. So we're going to talk tonight, I'm going to stress the idea that abundance means freedom. Because when people say, I want to be more abundant in my life, and they mean I want to be able to financially support myself well, usually they don't mean because I want to accumulate a lot of goodies and, you know, a lot of houses and a lot of cars. Some people do, but most people don't. What they really mean is I don't want to have to work so hard. I want to be free to enjoy life. And if I have abundance, then I will be free to do that. Why would you say we people want to live in abundance? Well, it's inherently in our being. If you think about the age-old caveman who didn't, you know, really strive for abundance, rather what he did was go out and get whatever was needed in the moment, and they all died pretty young, then humanity learned during that time, you know, he'd go out and get food, bring it home, they'd eat it, the next day he'd go out and get food, bring it home, they'd eat it. We began to learn as human beings that storing up abundance for times when food was scarce prevented the tribe from starving. So first of all, abundance is basically a survival mechanism that has been driven to the edge of extremes by consumerism and the idea that there's not enough and I want more and instant gratification. But from the standpoint of abundance means freedom, once the caveman realized that if uh, he and his, his hunting buddies went out and they got more food than they needed and they found a way to preserve it, Then he had time to make more babies and populate the tribe so they'd have more people and maybe even have some leisure time. As we've seen, there's been cave paintings and various different decorations in caves from ancient times that tell us that there had to have been leisure time or else they never would have taken the time to make cave paintings. They would have been too busy trying to survive. So equating abundance with freedom means you don't have to work. You're your own boss. You have idle time to enjoy whatever pleasures you want in life. And that's really why people want abundance. Once you've gotten the basic survival taken care of, you've got a roof over your head, you've got food on the table, and you have a way to get to and from work, so to speak, then everything else is gravy. But if you take that money you're making and you don't spend it on a lot of extraneous things and you tuck it aside, then you have freedom to do what really feels like abundance, which is to go inside yourself and to become acquainted with your higher self and your heart, and then you know that that's where the real abundance lies. So where would you say greed plays a role in all of this? Well, it's the idea that that there isn't, it, there's, it, there's a two-sided, it's like a two-edged sword here, because it's the idea that if you don't get more than you need and you get ahead of the other guy, the other guy is going to come and take it away from you. And there's also the idea that there's not enough. Therefore, you have to store up as much money as you possibly can because there'll never be enough. And what happens inside in the ego personality, because of the ego personality's um, feeling like it's separate, is that it pits mankind against mankind. You can think about right now the United States great drive to, you know, overtake all these countries so that we can get more oil because there'll never be enough oil because all these people are using up all of this oil. And this idea that there's never enough, it literally, just like a pendulum swing, if there's one side of the pendulum that swings to there's never enough, the other side, as far as it swings, is going to go to greed. So you're constantly accumulating more because you believe that there's never enough. If you think about people who are very rich, and still continue to do whatever money, underneath it, if you you know take away all the glamorous covering and fancy house and fancy clothes, you'll be afraid they are, that there's not enough. Basically the foundation for greed. So if abundance is something so good for us, why isn't everybody living in abundance? Well, basically we get hardwired and we get programmed when we're children. Because children... 
when they are born and they start, you know, crawling around and toddling around, are basically learning to survive in the world. And the parents attempt to, and this basically goes for all parents. I mean, I've been a parent. I'm a great-grandmother, so I know about this. You you give as everything you possibly can to your children so that whatever places you unknowingly neglect them in their mind, then they begin to forget their connections with what is deeper as they get older and older and older. And they begin to focus upon the conditions around them and they lose touch with their essence because now they're starting to have to fend for themselves. Practical, logical, linear, predictable, and pretty soon they begin focusing only on mundane concerns of life. It's really scarcity thinking consciousness, and it starts when we're children. So it feels like to the child that there's a limit to how much satisfaction it can get. There's only so much within its view of the way life works. So there's only so much food, and when the food isn't there and mother doesn't bring more, then it can't get any more yet because it's not old enough. And then as we get older, it goes into economics. And what happens then is we begin to forget the creativity we have. You know how parents always tell their children, um, you know, if the child says, oh, I saw this wonderful magical being, and the mother will say, oh, that's just your imagination. That's not real. The child begins to feel the limits of how much it can expect to express and still be approved of. And as you grow up, this carries with you carry it with you, and then you begin to realize that you really don't feel free and you begin to believe that it's really true that you, as God in form, cannot express abundantly that scarcity is real and that you need to focus on what is necessary for your basic survival. And then at the same time, because you're just concentrating on your basic survival, you begin to forget all of the aspirations you had, and it becomes like this struggle to just stay alive. And if you go back to Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of, of human psychological needs, survival is the lowest. It's the most basic of all human needs. And after that comes safety and relationships and things of that nature. So basically what happens is that you end up attempting to make sure that you do not have the pain of scarcity. And you do not take the time to use your aspirations and your desire to create and your desire to know yourself as God in form. You forget that that's what you really want to do because you're so busy avoiding the pain and discomfort of all the restrictions around your life. So then freedom becomes defined in terms of not having to experience the things that you find unpleasant versus freedom being I have everything I could possibly want, and I'm free to create however I want to create. So you're actually fighting against abundance and attempting to uh, avoid anything that's unpleasant rather than taking action based upon what your heart knows is best for you. So it's kind of like as, as children, we get programmed into this because of the way our cultures are structured. 